in the mid-90s, people in the church kept singing, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. It's easy to proclaim and shout aloud the goodness of God when things are doing great. You know, for us Christians, if we see a lot of people coming to Christ, we say, God is good. And when, when everything is okay, your health is okay, you're financially okay, every, the bills are paid off, we can shout and say, God is good. But you know, just as I do, there are times in our lives that when we allow our circumstances to dictate to us how we feel about God's goodness. I mean, where is the goodness of God when a fire or flood destroys home, business is collapsing, or mother loses her baby after six months of pregnancy, or a loved one is seriously injured and is told they can never walk again? Or maybe a loved one died during COVID, or, or, or you're told to have cancer and only have few months to leave. Or maybe perhaps your friends turn their back on you and you realize they were really not your friends. Where is the goodness of God when circumstances arise like the ones I, I mentioned? The Word of God tells us that no matter what our circumstances are, God is good. I want you to open your Bible and turn with me to James chapter 1, verses 16 to 18. And this morning, I want to continue with our series called Remember. And today, we'll talk about God's goodness. James 1, verses 16 to 18. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Let us pray. Abba, you are good. You are a good God to us. But sometimes, O oh God, Lord, we forget, O oh God, of your goodness. Whenever we are overwhelmed, O oh God, of the circumstances in our life. And today, we just pray that, Lord, we will remember the truth about your goodness. Speak to us, O Holy Spirit, O God. Lord, shed a light right now to your people. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Notice with me in verse 16 in the text, James said, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. The word deceive means do not be led astray. James is getting ready to talk to us about the goodness of God. But before he does this, he issues a warning. He says, do not be deceived. Do not be led astray. Notice that in the beginning of this chapter, James is talking about trials and temptations. But as he moves from talking about trials and temptations, he reminds us not to let the circumstances, the trials, and the temptations of this life to cause us to be deceived or be misled or cause us to question God's goodness. There are times when you will experience temptation and you may come to God and say, Lord, I thought you're good, but how come you are allowing this temptation to, to, to attack me? Lord, you... I know you are good, but how come, how come I'm still struggling with this temptation? Can you just take it away in the name of Jesus? The Word of God says, do not be deceived. Don't let the devil fool you into thinking that God is not good. There will be times in your life when you'll experience trials and even heartbreaks. And you'll look deep inside of yourself and your heart is broken and you begin to question God. It's when we focus on our circumstances and allow them to lead us astray that we may say things like, God, if you're good and you love me and your intentions toward me are good, then why do I have to struggle 
with these challenges in life. Lord, if you're good, why am I heartbroken right now? How can I possibly find your goodness, O God, and your hand of blessing in these circumstances? The Word of God says, do not be deceived. Do not let the circumstances you're in cause you to question the goodness of God. And so as James talks to us about not being deceived, he gives us some reasons here that we can know that God is good. Today, I want you to observe with me several reasons from this passage of Scripture that God is good. First, God is good because God's gifts are good. How do I know that God is good? He is good because His gifts to me are good. James 1, 17, section A said, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. According to the scripture, everything good in this world is from God. If it comes from God, it is good. If it's not good, it doesn't come from God. The Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. I want you to look at the word gift here in verse 17. You'll see it's used two times and it's the same word in the English language, okay, gift. But in the Greek language, there are two words for that. The first word, gift, okay, in the every good gift, stresses the action of giving. In other words, God's intention, His motivation, His action in giving to us is always good. Now, unfortunately, that's not true for human beings. For us, is it? Okay? You and I can go out and give someone a gift and yet not really have a good intention in giving it to them. We do it every Christmas time. We, we, we wrap, you know, our gift with a beautiful gift wrap with bow on it. And then, honestly, you know, is your intention good? Is your motivation good in giving that gift? Maybe for some of you, you're giving that gift because you're expecting them to return a gift to you as well. Or maybe you are giving that gift because you are expecting a favor from that person. You know, that's the way we do things sometimes. But that's not the way God works. Listen, God's motivation for giving to us always flows out of His love for us. Every good gift is related to the act of giving. The second word for gift, every perfect gift, focuses on the things that is given. And the Bible says that every perfect gift is from above. Now, the word perfect here means complete. We could say it in this way. When God gives you the completed gift, it will always be good. Sometimes we don't see the goodness of God in our lives because we don't see the completed gift. We're just seeing a part of it. And so we wonder, God, how can all of this be good? Rest assured, the Word of God says, every perfect Every completed gift is from above. And it is a good gift because it comes from a good God. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 9 to 11, Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he assures them that God gives his people good gifts. Matthew 7, verses 9 to 11, it says, Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a serpent. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Imagine, if my children, Isaac, uh, Kate, and Bea, for example, they, they just you know, played in the subdivision and then they went home and they asked their mom, Mom, can we have snacks? Okay, and what if my wife would say, sure, okay, and gives them the following stuff, okay? Two and one half cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking soda, three large eggs, 
three fourth cup of vegetable oil, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one and one half cups of buttermilk. I, I believe if my children will be receiving those ingredients from, from my wife, my, they will be saying, Yuck, what are those for? We're, we're not going to eat them. But what if, on the other hand, my, 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 my wife would say, Okay, you can have snacks. Just sit on the table and then bring out a piece of cake. Chocolate cake. And definitely, they will be enjoying their snacks. Listen, sometimes God gives you the cake, and other times, He gives you one ingredient at a time. And you're standing there with a mouth full of stuff, and you're thinking, God, if you're good, then why is my mouth full of this stuff? And after He gives you each ingredient, he begins to mix it up little by little, mixing it in a bowl. And you said, God, if you're good, why am I being stirred up? Then after he has mixed you up a little bit, he turns the oven to 350 degrees and then he slides you in the oven. And you shout, God, if you're good, why is the heat turned up so high in my life? That is why by faith, we look not at our present situation, not at our feelings, but we look at God's word, His intentions, and His character. By faith, we say, God, I know that you are good, and ultimately, your gifts are good. We can say those words which are recorded in Romans 8.28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. The Bible says, and we know. It didn't say, and we feel. Because sometimes we don't feel, you know, we, we don't feel joyful about our situation. It doesn't say, it appears that all things work together for the good. Because it doesn't always appear that way. But by faith, in the Word of God, I can say, we know. Or we can say, I know. I know all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to His purpose. Second reason is that God's character is unchangeable. God is good because His character is unchangeable. James 1.17, let me read from New King James Version. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Let me read to you New Living Translation. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. How do I know God is good? God is good because His character doesn't change. Look at how the Word of God describes our God. It describes Him as the Father of lights. He is the one who gave birth to every star in the entire universe. He grouped those stars into their constellation. He assigned their individual brightness. He is the Father of lights and He knows you personally. He knows your first name, your middle name, your last name. He even knows how many hair you have on your head. Let's look at what else God's Word says. God's Word says about the Father of Light. The Bible tells us there is no shadow or turning with Him. The brightness of the moon sometimes turns its dark side to us. By the way, there will be lunar eclipse on May 26 at 7, 11 p.m. in our nation. Okay? Let's just, let me just have a segue. Okay? As, as, as brilliant as the sun shines, there are times that, the, you know, the moon will have eclipse. Right? It will be, or the sun will be eclipsed by the moon. On that. It, it's, a, it's a shadow. But there is no shadow of turning with our Father in heaven. Why? He does not change. God 
it never changes. We change most of the time. But the God we serve doesn't change. The Bible says there is no variation of shadow of turning with Him. Our God is not evolving. He's not becoming wiser because He's already perfectly wise. He knows everything. He never takes down notes on sermons because He knows everything. He never looks down from heaven and says, Oh my goodness, what happened? How, how come COVID spread? He will not say those things because He is an omniscient God. He knows everything. He knows your choices before you make them. And yet, He gives you the freedom to choose. How does He do that? He's God and He can do that if He wants to. He could never be more any more holy than he was or is because his holiness is perfect. His power could never be increased or diminished because his power is perfect. God is unchangeable in his character and that means if our God has ever been good, then he will always be good. His character is unchangeable. And so when life is not good, don't ever be led to question God's goodness or His love or God's wonderful intentions toward you. He is good and He is good all the time. Third, God is good because God's salvation is sure. James 1.18 says, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Here, James points that the salvation we have in Jesus Christ is the ultimate expression and the highest example of God's goodness toward us. The word of God says, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. When God sent his son Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross for us, that would be enough to prove that he is good to you. His salvation is sure. This salvation is of his own will. Nothing and no one in this world forced God to give us salvation through His Son. He wasn't lonely. He wasn't deficient. He wasn't lacking in anything, but simply out of His own good pleasure, out of His own desire to do good, out of His own desire to be gracious. Out of God's own love, He chose to save sinners. And that is us, sinful, undeserving, yet God continues to show His goodness to us. Let me close our message today. How easy it is for us to place blame on God during difficult times in life. We must not entertain or be deceived by these thoughts. One of our first reactions when life isn't what we think it should be is to place the blame on God. Honestly, when we get sick, we blame God, right? Even if we're eating the food that's prohibited by our doctors, and then when we get worse, we blame God. When our parents tell us that the person that you want to marry is not the right person for you, and you push through with it, and then when it didn't work, the marriage doesn't work, you blame God. You know, it's easy to point our finger to God. Every difficult thing that we experience in life, we blame it on God even if it's not His fault. 
it is easy to place blame on God when we see evil in our life or evil in the world around us. James tells us to focus instead on our good and loving Heavenly Father who only gives good and perfect gifts to the world. Satan loves to enter into our thoughts and emotions whenever we are looking for explanations on why our lives are the way they are. It is in these moments where life isn't great that we begin to look for reasons why. Too many times the blame ends up on God. In those times, let yourself be reminded that you, it, it, that you are in a helpless position and the enemy is going to do everything to convince you that God is not good as He says He is. Friends, we have the option to choose to believe the truth instead of the lies enemy tries to give to us during hard times. God is always good even when the world we live in tells us otherwise. That's why for us who believe in God, for those of us who love God, even if we are facing giants in our lives, even if we are facing big walls, big mountains of problems, we can say, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Can we worship the Lord? Can we express to Him how good He is? Not because of what we have, not because of our health, not because of our financial affluence, not because of we don't have any problem. God is good because that's who He is. And today, can we just express to the Lord and tell Him that He is good. He is good. Can we worship the Lord? Oh my life you have been faithful. Oh yes, you are. And all my life you have been so so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh I'm gonna see of the goodness of God. Oh my life. And all my life you have been And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God oh, goodness, Lord. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me Your goodness is running after it's running out to me With my life laid down and surrender now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after Surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath. I'm gonna sing 
of the goodness of God. My will see of the goodness of God. Oh, my will see of the goodness of God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if we're just going to open our mind, open our eyes, we will see that God is good all the time. You know, circumstances in our life will just pass and test us and strengthen us. But doesn't it will never ever change the fact that God is good all the time. You know, at the end of the day, you will see that all those valleys that you went through, all those giants that you face are just one of the ingredients that God allowed or God used so that His purpose for you will come to pass. And that is why today I want you to have this resolution in your heart and say to yourself, I know God is good and all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. If you are here for the first time and you click this video because as a friend of yours or a colleague of yours said this link, you know what? You are blessed because your colleague, your friend loves you. You know what? Allow me to share to you two more verses. First verse that I would like to share with you is John chapter 3 verse 16. And the word of the Lord says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. His name is Jesus. And the word of the Lord says, Whoever believes in Jesus shall not perish in hell, but have everlasting life in heaven. Another verse that I would like to share with you is John chapter 14, verse 6. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you are here today, and maybe you have a religion, but you don't have relationship with Jesus, can I invite you to pray with me and pray it coming from your heart and make this day a special day because you are inviting Jesus to become your Lord and Savior. Would you like to do that? If you would like to do that, please pray with me and pray coming from your heart. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for reminding me that you are good and you are good all the time. Jesus, please forgive me for all my shortcomings, for all my sins. And today, I accept you not only as my Savior, but also as my Lord. Abba, thank you for loving me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Holy Spirit, please walk with me in my life's journey every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. My friend, if you pray that prayer, the word of the Lord says that your name right now is written in the book of life. And the angels in heaven and we in word for the world are rejoicing with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, our service has ended. May the Holy Spirit fill you with joy, with hope, and love. May this week be a great week for you. May God's favor be upon you all the days of your life. And this is our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God bless all of you. See you next Sunday. Have a blessed day.